this is the story of a miraculous white powder that is helping to win the war its name is dichloro diphenyl trichloroethane for short ddt it may one day prove our greatest weapon towards victory over an enemy more murderous even than the fascist against disease Yes, today, DDT is necessarily a military weapon. We're turning it out by the thousands of tons, but every ounce is needed for the war effort. When the fascist is finally beaten, though, DDT will be available to all, and the homecoming of the healthiest army in military history will be in no small part due to DDT, our great new weapon for war today and peace tomorrow. DDT, the wonder chemical. In the 1950s, DDT was thought to be the solution to all of humanity's pest-related problems. DDT was originally used in World War II to protect U.S. soldiers from lethal diseases such as malaria and typhus, which are both transmitted by insects. American planes would fly across the earth, dousing everything in a thin, white mist. DDT was a silent killer that could stop mosquitoes and other deadly bugs in their tracks. After the war ended in 1945, DDT had saved millions of lives worldwide. Suddenly, large chemical companies were introducing a new, commercialized form of DDT into the homes of American citizens. These companies promised that DDT would be the most effective and convenient way to keep unwanted pests at bay. At the time, it seemed that the invention of DDT marked the end of the everlasting war against insects and the deadly diseases which they carry. The truth is, the history behind DDT is much darker than we think. For you see, DDT had many other negative effects on the environment. However, society chose to ignore these effects and continued to use DDT in order to create a world free from the inconveniences caused by certain insects. Even the government promoted the use of this powerful pesticide and allowed DDT to be sprayed nearly everywhere. The effects of DDT were immediate. Within weeks, entire neighborhoods suddenly became devoid of any signs of insect life. Unfortunately, DDT did not kill just insects. DDT had a lasting effect on everything it touched. Birds, household pets, and even humans contracted life-threatening ailments after being exposed to DDT. However, it was too late to reverse these effects. By the late 1950s, over half a pound per person was sprayed in the United States. DDT had completely devastated the wildlife of North America. If no one put a stop to the overuse of this pesticide, then both humans and the environment would be forced to face terrible consequences. Fortunately, there was one woman who recognized DDT for the killer it really was. That woman's name was Rachel Carson. This is her story. Rachel Carson was born on May 27, 1907, in the quiet town of Springdale, Pennsylvania, to Maria McLean and Robert Carson. The early years of her life were spent wandering around her parents' farm, taking in the beauty of the world around her. It was here where Carson developed a unique bond with the environment. She was fascinated by the way the world worked. Through the help of her mother, who worked as a teacher at the local school, Rachel Carson was able to quickly become very knowledgeable about nature. It was also at this time when her mother introduced Carson to writing. She immediately became a fabulous writer and won awards for short stories which she published in a local magazine. Carson attended Parnassus High School in 1921 and went on to earn a scholarship to the Pennsylvania College for Women. She originally intended to major in English and become a teacher, following in the footsteps of her mother. However, partway through her college career, Rachel Carson switched her major to biology. She was only one of three women at the college to do so. This decision was heavily influenced by Mary Scott Sinker, who was a professor at the college. She convinced Carson that she should rediscover her love for nature and that becoming a biologist was a very respectable career. 
After graduating in 1929, Rachel Carson then went on to further her education at Johns Hopkins University and the Woods Hole Marine Biological Laboratory. Once she was able to enter the workforce, Carson had her first job as a professor of zoology. She continued to teach until 1932, until she felt that she was ready for a much bigger responsibility. Mary Sinker, her old professor, helped Rachel Carson land a job at the U.S. Bureau of Fisheries in Washington, D.C. At her new job, Carson was commissioned to write 52 short radio programs on marine life, which were part of a series called Romance Under the Water. Her natural gift for writing helped Rachel Carson to make her radio programs as vivid and interesting as possible. Her stories were able to reveal the hidden beauty of the natural world to the American people. After spending a few more years at her government job, Rachel Carson chose to use her writing talents to their full potential. She quickly produced three books by 1955. They were rapidly picked up off the shelves, and Rachel Carson's unique writing style captivated the minds of thousands of readers nationwide. At this time, DDT was being introduced to the public. Rachel Carson was quick to pick up on the adverse side effects of this pesticide. She wrote an article on DDT and sent it to Reader's Digest. It was quickly rejected and regarded as being too unpleasant. However, 13 years later, in 1958, Carson once again began to doubt the effects of DDT. Her motivation came from a letter by her old friend in Massachusetts, which told the story of countless bird species rapidly dying as a side effect of DDT. This time, Rachel Carson would not be stopped. She knew that she was the only one who could save the environment from the horrors of DDT. With the help of her magnificent writing skills, Rachel Carson began a new book entitled Silent Spring. It explained how this pesticide could accumulate in the fat of humans and other animals, which would cause cancer and many other genetic diseases. In her book, she warned the American people of what the world would look like if pesticides continued to be overused. After four years of work, Silent Spring finally hit the shelves and immediately became a bestseller. One chapter in particular stuck in the minds of readers. It depicted a fictional town where the once familiar sounds of nature, the songs of birds, the chirping of crickets, and even the giggling of human children were all silenced by the overuse of DDT. The American people were immediately outraged how could something that seems so good actually have horrendous effects on the environment? As Rachel Carson's book gained even more popularity, the large chemical companies which manufactured DDT became worried that there would soon be zero interest in their products. They began campaigns to discredit Carson's research and even personally attacked her. Numerous television commercials and cartoons were created just to make people doubt the words of Rachel Carson. Eventually, Carson's research on DDT was noticed by the U.S. government. She was scheduled to speak in Congress about her findings in 1963. Despite her breast cancer leaving her in a horrible condition, Rachel Carson appeared in front of thousands of viewers, ready to face her most difficult battle yet. Rachel Carson managed to deliver a detailed and thought-provoking speech about the effects of DDT. It changed the mindset of many Americans and soon everyone was taking a stand alongside Rachel Carson. Unfortunately, she was not able to see the actual effects of her work. She died shortly after her speech in 1964 due to breast cancer. Her speech eventually led to the formation of the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA for short, in 1970. The EPA's first major responsibility was to ban the use of DDT nationwide and ensured that all future pesticides would be used with the health of the environment in mind. To this day, Rachel Carson's epic stand against the misuse of DDT continues to inspire future generations to defend the hidden beauty of the natural world.